Hello everyone, welcome to another episode on the Siblings Dan channel. My name is Wingless and there's a lot of you that probably started out with the new season 13 of Atlantic Prisons on MC Hub. And what I've noticed is a lot of people are not sure where to begin, where to start, what to do. And I figured it, this is a good time to do a new update given that um, a lot of this season 13 stuff has changed things a little bit. And uh, we'll get into that hopefully help those get on track faster and be able to get through this season's prison escapades as much as possible. So let's get started quickly and get into all the things that you should know, what you should get into, and how to really begin getting into the leveling up and ranking up of your pickaxe as well as your mind to move yourself forward. So let's get started. Woo! All right, so quick breakdown on what's basically changed this season. The biggest thing that's changed this season is that Cluster Bomb is no longer available. This has been one of the abilities that's been used last season a lot to get people moving ahead fairly quickly once they reach tier two of their pickaxe. Unfortunately, you can't get that this season, so you're gonna have to look into other alternatives on how to move forward. Mostly this season, there's a lot of new additional abilities, mostly reflected around the drills and how they improve. So that's going to be one of the things to look into is where the drills are going to end up being a focal point on how to get resources. Some of the abilities have been moved around as well. And since we're going to be covering mostly just tier one and tier two stuff, uh, I want to point out that for some reason they've moved laser to tier two. Does that mean laser is better? Not really, but it is just moved to tier two and that that'll be available just like it did last season, except it's on tier two. What's funny though, is apparently you still get the enchantment books. If you're not even in tier two yet, uh, you can still place them on your pickaxe if you have the book so whoop, don't know what's going on with that but whatever lastly there's a lot of the spawned abilities like mind man rage uh enderman that are just pushed to the fourth tier um i'm just mentioning that just because they've they kind of moved around some of the abilities around but if you're wondering why it's not like on tier three and stuff like that mostly they're uh, they're in the later tiers right now but let's focus first and foremost on what you should do with your pickaxe and then we'll talk about the backpack as well so that you're set up as best as possible to start getting resources without losing resources so you can right click while holding your pickaxe and then go to the omni tool enchantments and here you'll see that there's the four enchantments that are up here the first and foremost one you want to work on in this row is getting fortune up to 50 increases the amount of blocks you get while mining it is useful you want to get on top of that as soon as possible it shouldn't take too too long but it's worth getting because the more you have this raise the faster you can gather blocks getting as many blocks as possible is key but you're gonna need space to store all those blocks that you get as well and we'll talk about that with the backpack now you'll notice as i mentioned before laser got moved to the second tier and then there's these two it really uh, in my opinion doesn't really matter which ones you pick you can either work on both of them or focus on just one of them they all have their advantages and disadvantages in my opinion and my opinion is jack hammer will help you a lot more later on while explosion is your all around it's just gonna explode holes and stuff like that and you'll have more explosions happening with explosive rather than jackhammer just because jackhammer will have like the basic stuff as well but later on it'll start getting and whittling down layers instead so it really depends on what you're looking into and what the size of your mind's going to be so early on jackhammer is not going to be the best fully but explosive uh will be but then explosive later on might not be as effective as it is as jackhammer so you can work on both you can work on one of them but i would say if you need a number to focus on go up to 500 for each and that'll work itself out double time is one of the drill specific enchantments that have been added this time what you could do is upgrade it if you have drill but again when you're starting you're not going to really have too many abilities to put as many drills up and running to get them working so work at it at the level that you're at right now i haven't been focusing on it but if you have a really powerful and a really good drill that you're able to gain either if it's a bedrock or a netherite one it might be worth it especially if you've upgraded it as well otherwise this might not be one to focus on yet but for sure you want to get fortune out of the way maxed out immediately once you get to tier two again laser you can add to it if you want but this is one that you can upgrade at any time especially when you get to a point where you can get a lot of it so that goes on how you feel with that prosperity is another one you want to work on to and upgrade because it's another means of getting you multiple blocks and a lot of e tokens as fast as possible because you're getting as many blocks so prosperity you want to work on getting that upgraded as soon as 
as possible as well so that you can get yourself more money fast as possible. Overdrive is another one of the new drill abilities. Same thing as the other one. If you have a drill that is worth it, that is at a higher tier level that can get you enough E tokens and stuff like that, that will be where it's going to work out. And trust me, drills are going to be a focus later on, but when you're just starting, it might not be as much and you might be just be wasting your E tokens at this time. But you'll see that both of them have a total limit of it. So once you get to a point where you can just max them out, it will be useful. I just early on don't think that it's as useful, but go at it at the pace that you want. And then lastly, seismic charge, still a pretty good one. Acts sort of like a delayed explosive, but you can trigger it to do a bigger explosion depending on the level as well. Again, it's got a total unlike jackhammer explosive and laser, which is unlimited. So this might be something worth upgrading later on to max when you're mining a lot and wanting it to get triggered. So those are the two tiers that you want to focus on. Again, you start with tier one and then you're going to have to work on using your pickaxe nonstop until you are able to get to level five. And then once you're at level five, you can go and upgrade to tier two once your pickaxe is at level five to have access to the second row. And for the next one, it'll be 15 and the next one is 25. So there's all the, the other levels as well. But for the right from the get go, want to work on fortune for the tier one, pick the abilities and whatever combination you want. I would say hold off on double time for now until you've got more of a mine working itself out and being able to max that out as well. Once you get to tier two, again, if you want to add to laser, you can go ahead or continue focusing on these while you're focusing on the other ones, but get prosperity up and running as soon as possible. And then later on, you can focus on the other abilities as well, because again, they're not unlimited. And so they can be maxed out and that'll most likely help you once you have those combinations of it. Strategize how you are getting your tokens. Don't spend on it immediately. So you'll see that I have a blue a lapis drill. And I mean, it's, it's slow because I'm not focusing on it too much, but that's also because I make more money trying to mine my mind with the other abilities than I do utilizing the drill. So look at how many E tokens you get and then go from there. And that's how you're going to be able to like have an idea of like where to go with regards to what your purchases, but just always take a look at the numbers and then go from there. Now, what about backpacks? So when focusing on backpacks, you want to right click and then focus on the backpack enchantments. And in this one, there's just four capacity. One of the more important ones, because it's how much you can store prospector where you can get a gemstone or other upgrades that can help you with your pickaxe or with your backpack uh, or with other things like if you're if you have a wand or a phantom pickaxe, those things can be useful for you. And so this is one that is cheap to upgrade and uh, to get into fairly quickly. So you, it's just good to get out of the way and upgrade it to max to 10 won't really take that long worth it every time sell multi is where you're going to get more e tokens so long as you're mining in your own mine sell multi is not effective when you're on someone else's mine so if you're focused on or have a friend that already has a much higher bigger p mine than yours and then you're going to theirs and selling it to them and getting the money that way then just be aware that you're just doing a trade for their shop you're not doing a sell of your own shop which is how uh, the sell multi works. So if you're focusing on just your own mind, you want to work on getting sell multi up as much as possible to help you out with getting more E tokens. If you are focusing and have the opportunity and you're able to get more tokens from the other uh, minds of a friend or another group that you're, you you have a deal with and all that stuff. Perfect. That's not a problem. Just know that sell multi is not going to be effective for that. So you might want to focus on other things rather than that during that time. Now auto sell, it says unlimited and you can have it up pretty high, but this is a balancing act on how much you need with auto sell as well as capacity because auto sell will get you selling as much as possible every five seconds. And so if you have a backpack that's able to be sustained by being sold all the time, that's great. But if your mine is too big, it won't matter how fast it can auto sell. You might be putting too much in your backpack faster than the auto sell can work. So you might need more capacity or you need to sell faster. The way that I see it is that you want to start at a reasonable capacity. So start at like 25,000 aim, aim for that. And then every time you start seeing that your mine is getting filled, as soon as you trigger either a Moab or it takes out your whole mine, or you have an ability that takes out a lot of blocks and your backpack gets filled out and has that big thing going inventory is full. Well, you might want to double your capacity. So go from 25,000 to 50,000, 50,000 to 100,000, 100,000 to 200,000 and so on. Just kind of double it every single 
single time, you should be able to be at a point where you can do that. And then every so often as well, start upping your auto sell as well. So it can sell just as fast, but you'll see that I currently don't have it at a very high level as well. And that's just because the capacity is working itself out at the moment, but that is something I will have to play with as I go up. And right now I'm at rank 200. So that's the state that I'm at with that level. So what you want to work on is make sure that every time you are mining that your backpack doesn't get filled. And if it does focus on getting the capacity up. And if you think that the auto sell needs to be selling a lot faster as well, because it doesn't empty fast enough, then you want to start working on increasing the auto sell as well. And just do a small little balancing act. My suggestion, start with 25,000, reach that. And then if you see that it gets full a lot, double that when your inventory is showing itself full very often. And then the auto sell, maybe around the same time as when you see the inventory full, maybe start upgrading it by 50 or by 25 and then take a look at that at that point. So reminder, get Prospector up and running as fast as possible. Get enough capacity to fill out the blocks that are coming in with the upgraded pickaxe abilities and enchantments that you've added and add auto sell every so often in conjunction with capacity to make sure that you are getting as much of the blocks as possible without it being filled too quickly and work on sell multi. If you're focusing predominantly on your own mind, it will get you more e-tokens and you won't have to worry as much when you are focusing it on other people's P mines, but don't ignore it. If you're going back to your mind, you want to focus on getting this upgraded. That covers the usages of your pickaxe and the storage of your backpack. Now there's another critical thing you want to work on almost as soon as possible, if not the first thing you do when you start, and that is selecting your path and selecting the right path. Now, when I'm talking about path, I mean this, go slash path, enter and you'll be given three paths and you're automatically given city when you're equipping and you'll see that there's perks for all of these you can take a look at it on your own when you check it out but you'll see the city relates to the stuff for the your city environment and seeing how fast they can gather resources then there's one for pve this will be probably useful if you're looking to focus on stuff for when you do battles in the dungeons and pve stuff like that but what we're going to focus on and the reason why we're going to tell you to focus on this is because you're going to be focusing on your mind as well. And so you should be selecting mining immediately. And by doing so, you will gain a lot more E tokens. You'll get a lot more abilities and a lot more extras while you are mining. To activate this, you select it and then make sure that you're selecting the pickaxe and you'll see that there's all these paths and how far it goes and what kind of benefits you can get. Early on, you're not gonna get as many, but the percentage will go up very quickly over time. Already, while my rank is at 200, my my mining is at 252 and already I've get chances where I just get random E tokens given to me when I mine at a rate of 0.0252. It's not a lot, but when it does, it gets about half a million at this time. Moab, it's a low chance, but it basically takes out the whole mine. So when the mine gets bigger and bigger, this will help you really get rid of all of the blocks. And it is another reason why it's kind of important to have as much space as you can so that when this triggers, you are getting the maximum amount from your mind. And if it tells you that your inventory is full, you might be worth to increase it maybe a little bit more the next time that Moab gets triggered. Lucky Keys is great because it's just another way of getting extra keys and it's random keys, not always the same type of keys. So it's not just Vogue Keys that you get. So far I've seen, I've gotten all the way up to Shark Keys from just randomly mining. And so this is where you get it from the mining path. It's rarely useful. Lucky Chest is another thing that seems odd at first, but gets you a lot of of random items that are very useful as well as potentially extra keys you get very little beacons but it's still like good to have for free and then you can get random pouches as well either booster pouches or what you can get is rank kits so just the armor sets themselves but when you activate when you open the token that you get from it you get an extra pouch and that pouch could be anything as well so you have a chance of getting those to get you beacons e-tokens boosters or crystals as well so all of this is just extra 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 and then lastly lucky balls is just another method of getting e-tokens as well so you can get e-tokens directly or you can get e-tokens from lucky balls or you can get e-tokens from some of the lucky chests and you can get other pouches or e-tokens or other items from the keys that you get from this this is why the mining path is the way to go right from the beginning and it will help you immensely so if you haven't already equipped it if you're playing right now do it do it do it do it do it the only reason i would say not to do it is if you are focused on being 
a PVE player. If you are not touching the mine as much and you're focused on the PVE stuff, then it makes sense to have the mining path not selected and doing the PVE path. However, if you're going to be playing this more on the average and you don't have a, the set gear to deal with PVE on a regular basis and you're going to be in the mines very often, mining path is the way to go. And I highly recommend that you get on top of that if you haven't already done so. Okay, now we've covered enchantments, we've covered backpack, we've covered the paths. Now, something to focus on on a daily basis and things that'll get you even more ahead and extra items as well. First and foremost, you should be doing this already. And if you haven't, then you're missing out on a lot of extras and that is voting. Make sure you are voting. You can get up to six vote keys when voting and be able to get this every 24 hours to be able to unlock chances of getting extra pouches, extra items, upgrade keys up to the next level or even a chance to get ranks and if you don't have a rank yet then those are chances to get you higher ones reminder that if you sync up your account to the mc hub discord channel you will be able to get yourselves either an epic for skyblock sun or a surfer rank for prisons and those are going to be an extra thing to get for you and i'll talk about it in a second once you're done voting do slash g kits when they're available after you vote, you'll have an extra item to select, which will be a green emerald gem. And when you select it, it gives you two extra boosters as well as an extra key. So after voting for the vote keys, you have a chance to getting in a random extra key when doing slash G kit. So that is just one perk when voting for keys that you have access to this to get an extra key. The other perk that you get when voting is that for the next 24 hours until you vote again, you can gain a key from the vote party. So once everyone has voted 450 times at this time they will give you another random key so long as you are on the server during that time with that that means it's an extra key to get an extra item or a chance to get more items to upgrade yourselves moving forward so that's really worth it should you win a rank or should you have already upgraded before or should you have synced up your account to get one of the ranks as well you can do slash kits and you'll be able to claim all of these kits that you have so you do get the surfer one if you are synced up with MC Hub and you have that all set up, follow the directions that they provide with regards to that to get that. But you could have other ones as well to help you out. At this time, I have four of them, so I can claim all four of them. And as I claim them, you'll see that I get the armor notes that I need for them, but I also get pouches. And those pouches are very useful for more upgrades, more e-tokens, more boosters, and even beacons that are useful during that. The pouches are not gained when you select the member one. So if you go to kits and select member, you only get get the basic armor kit, not the pouches, but all of the other one, you get an extra pouch and this is given to you every 24 hours. So those are extra pouches you want to claim when you have a chance. Lastly, slash battle pass or slash pass. You'll have random daily challenges to reach and you can focus on them and get through them very quickly, but you might be just doing them passively and that's fine. You don't have to focus on them, but it's worth checking them out every so often because you'll notice sometimes you'll have items that'll be available to you just from doing it and the next one that i have is 50 gold coins that's premium money right there that's just sitting there and i can either focus a little bit and make sure that i unlock it or i'll just eventually get it and i can claim it later on and gain myself a little bit of gold coins to be able to use on any other gold coins that i gain during the sessions that i'm in as well so it's worth taking a look at that and if you've paid for the battle pass and i'm not suggesting you should at least not for someone who's just starting or is just playing it at uh, on the casual but just know that there are extra items that you can claim as well as the basic tier free items so premium rewards and free rewards are provided during that and it's dependent on the unlocking of all of the daily challenges which also awards you 15,000 experience points so if you're looking to upgrade your pickaxe if you're looking to uh, get some extra items that is the way to go Woo. So to recap, make sure that you get the right enchantments to get yourself moving as fast as possible by focusing on getting fortune up, then picking one of the abilities to help you with the mine getting cleared out, either jackhammer explosion or both on tier one, but make sure that you get fortune maxed as soon as possible. And then once you get to tier two, make sure to get prosperity to help you out as soon as possible as well to get all of the blocks you can while you're mining.
And for backpack, make sure that you get to 25,000 at first for the space. Make sure that prospector is maxed out to 10 because that's just going to be extra items given as soon as possible every hour while you're playing, as well as getting your auto sell up and running as much as possible so that you are able to get the bonuses from that and that you're not missing out on when your abilities are triggered to fill out your backpack and are able to sell it and make sure to get sell multi up because that's where you're going to get more e tokens. But if you're going to be focusing on another player's P mine for a bit until you're leveled up a certain amount, sell multi can be left on its own for a little bit until you get to the other one. Regarding the new meta, make sure that once you have enough money, you can start working on the drills. But if you don't have those early on, not worth touching it just, just yet. But eventually, once you get the right kind of drills and your mine is big enough for it and you're getting enough e tokens, then getting those upgraded will help you out. Make sure to select mining path as soon as possible if you are not going to be doing PVE stuff on the regular. It's going to help you a lot, give you all the extra e tokens, items, and abilities and keys. So worth jumping onto that as well. And do not forget to do your daily vote, daily G kits, daily kits, and also slash daily. And make sure that you're claiming them so that you can get those extra items all the time, every day, so that you are moving forward. Hope that's helped you out. I hope that that's a good plan of action for you if you weren't sure where to go. There's still lots to figure out. There's the Slash City, figuring out the robots that you get as well and placing them and getting those resources. Make sure to claim your stuff from your drill when you have it by doing Slash Drills. You'll see that there's a giant crystal with all the stats and putting all the crystal bonuses in there to help you with all the enchantments you do get as well. So all those are extra stuff to look into, but I think I've given a good start on where to begin and then work on moving forward on that. If you're familiar with the auction house and you want to look into that, make sure that you're getting your stuff from there when you know that it is a good rate. Early on right now, if you're focused on getting just gold coins and you're not wanting to spend money on it, then what you can do is from all of the daily stuff and the voting and all of the stuff with the pouches, you could potentially get beacons from those. If you've got about 10,000 beacons, most of the time at this time, they're tradable for 100 gold coins. You could wait and pick those up as soon as possible or see if there's other deals that are lower than that. This will not last long. It tends to happen early on when people are trying to gather themselves up for the early reset. Later on, it'll be more expensive, but it is a way for people to get gold coins early on. So if you're interested in that, look into it. Lastly, and this is again, dependent on if you are able to get it or not, is get yourself a pet. A rare pet or more is all that's needed because if you are randomly in your mind, you you have a chance of having it reset and then when it resets you'll be able to get the pet explosion trigger like so with that, that ability itself can help you gain even more E tokens when it does trigger. It triggers roughly about every half an hour or so. It also may be better once the pet levels up, but you do not need a max level pet. You could, it'll work almost right from the get go and you can get it working on right off the bat for you to help you move forward as well. If, if it is ready to trigger, you could sometimes do slash RR. It doesn't work all the time, but it can sometimes trigger trigger the ability of the pet. So take a look at that, see what it does, and that'll help you out as well. That's all I've got for you today in this episode. I hope these tips help you out. I hope that this gets you started getting quickly. And if you haven't started yet and you want to join, don't hesitate to join us up on MC Hub. You can also join the Discord channel for Siblings Den and chat with myself, Mort, or any of the other teams that are playing and interacting with the items on our channel. You can also subscribe, hit that notification bell for the next video and looking forward for the next big episode that we're working on right now Woo! if you if you don't know you'll know if you check out the videos or the community page but if you know you know Woo. thank you very much i wish it was a wonderful day and good luck mining with the new reset of season 13 of atlantic prisons Woo! yeah